everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dora, and this channel is called Dear Dora. And today I'm here with another Ugandan, someone with the same experience who has worked in the UAE in the Arab world, someone who is a creator also. He makes travel videos on his channel. And today we want to talk about our life experiences as Ugandans working in the Arab world. So, Rashid, welcome to my channel and introduce yourself. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Rashid Freestyler. As, as she said, uh, I'm a travel content creator on my YouTube channel. But also, besides besides that, uh, we have a similar experience. We've, we've also been, uh, we've both been in uh, in the Gulf countries and hustling. hustling. <laughs> and that's what majorly we are up to here to discuss. Thank you so much. So, where exactly in the Arab world are you based? Uh, so basically for me, I'm based in Dubai, uh, actually I'm based in Sharjah, but Sharjah and Dubai, they are two different states, but they are closer to each other. So I'm based in, so I'm based in uh, Sharjah, or you can call it Dubai. Thank you so much. For, for how long have you worked in the UAE? I've been working in the UAE for three years now. Yeah, so for three years, there have been three good years of hard work, patience, uh, of course, prayer and persistence. Yes. So ever since you went, this is the first time you've come back to Uganda? Yeah, this is basically the first time I've been into Uganda. Uh, because I, if I remember very well, I left in 2018. And ever since then, I never came back, to, uh, I never came back home. So this has been basically the first time uh, I'm back here on the ground. Wow, wow. Welcome back home. <laughs> it was two years in Saudi Arabia. I can't imagine yours. Three years is a long time. So Rashid, what was that turning point for you here in Uganda? When you said, Uganda, Kampala, I've had enough. Let me go and I try life elsewhere. What was that one moment for you that made you make that big decision? So I think that was when I... Uh, I remember very well, that was when I completed my A-level. Uh, yeah, I completed my A-level in 2016. Yeah. So I had an option of going to to the university and pursue my bachelor's or master's but I decided to turn around and and decide to go to the Arab world to, to earn a fortune because of the situation back here because most of us we come from humble families uh, with humble backgrounds and at some point uh, we reached like I reached a point when most of my uh, colleagues like some some of my friends who are like older than me they had uh, graduated already but they were jobless you know and some other friends who and some of and some of my other friends who turned around and went to the arab world made a fortune from there so i was like no for me <laughs> masters me aside let me take route. yeah let me take the best route and so far uh, the things have been so good wow yeah wow wow here in uganda it is not guaranteed someone made a joke that the ugandan government changed the key education is no longer the key to success but we are really happy to hear that he's doing good out there. Rashid, what job opportunities are out there for the young males in the Arab world? So for the young, uh, so for the young males in the Arab world, actually opportunities over there, they are endless, they are limitless. It's just up to you to, to determine what uh, suits better for you. Like for example, there are so many opportunities. You can go as uh, maybe uh, a security guard. It's an opportunity and you can earn good. Uh, and you and you can earn better. You can go as a, a chef if you know how to cook. You can go as a, a driver. You can go as a, as a receptionist. You know. You can go as a videographer. You can go as a, a manager if you have a managerial experience. So the opportunities there they are really 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 uh, limitless. It's just up to you to determine and find what suits you better. The opportunities are very many, but how safe are certain jobs? You mentioned drivers. You mentioned about security guards. How safe are those jobs for our boys out there? Actually, the opportunities over there, they are very, very endless. Like, for example, for security guards, uh, they don't have guns. So it, it means that they are very safe for them. Uh, taxi drivers, the roads there, they are very uh, safe for them, you know. To drive. Yeah, to drive. If, if, you know, if you know how to drive, basically, you know, um, the opportunities to make it uh, as a driver, they are also limitless. Thank you so much. So we want to know, did you use a company to go or did you use some connections or you went there personally? How was your experience? 
so for me personally uh the way i went there i went solo i never used the company i went there to visit one of my uh relatives but i decided to find my luck and my fortune so i uh, things changed up and i decided to stay over and make a living mm -hmm. yeah. thank you so much i believe the time you have spent over there you have made friends who came using companies, who came using connections. Yeah. And we want to hear it from you. What are those other things that companies do that they shouldn't be doing? Or how good are they if they take you from Uganda out there for you to work? So basically some companies, they tend to over exaggerate. So be cautious before you take that opportunity of going through a company. Yeah. Some companies, they tend to over exaggerate. For example, they can tell you that you'll be earning a uh, 4M or 3M, but by the time you reach there, you will be earning 600,000, sorry, 600,000 Ugandan shillings. That's that's around maybe $200 or like 1M. So be cautious. But most of the companies right now, they are being regulated by the authorities, both in the Gulf countries and back here at home. So that type of faking around no longer exists that much, but uh, before it used to exist, but still it exists uh, within like, like within the other side. Wow, so above it all, just be cautious, don't just put your money out there. So you decided to stay in UAE and because you had seen a very good opportunity out there, how did you find that job? What was the process of job hunting in a country you don't have any knowledge about? So basically, uh, when I arrived, uh, I had some friends, you know, I was... Uh, Touring, touring around the places when I saw some job some job opportunities yeah. that I could uh, manage, some opportunities that, that I could handle. So the process over there is quite uh, difficult, but it's very simple if you're determined. Wow. Like for example, uh, the easiest process, like some people, like what some people I know, like uh, some people I know, like what they did, uh, they connected with like they connected with friends i personally myself i also connected with friends you know uh i dropped my uh, cvs you know i got invited there are also some uh uh job listing websites like for example there is uh college times there is uh indeed there is uh dubizo so all those websites if you if you're determined and you apply every now and then trust me within the shortest span you're there you will have landed a better job you mean it is much easier to find a job there over here in Kampala because of the organization? Or you want to comment that the friends out there in the diaspora are more friendly than the friends you had over here? Say something about that. No, actually for me, based on my personal experience, yeah. it's, it's, it's all about commitment. Because we, we, like whenever we are here in, uh, in town, back here in Kampala, we tend to be over relaxed when it comes to job hunting. Like for example, yeah. someone might communicate and say that there is a job interview going on there, but how many of us will walk? But how many of us will walk in and go there to apply? None. But over there, you know, there is some kind of determination that that um, drives. You. Yeah, there is some kind of determination that really drives you. You get determined and committed to find a job. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so, so much. I hope you guys are picking some lessons out there so you don't over hustle when you move to the UAE. My experience working in Saudi Arabia was not easy. Personally, I felt overworked and at times underpaid. So you want to hear your story. Are you overworked the boys? Is it because you are males? No one is going to listen to your complaints. They believe the boys are stronger. We want to hear from you. Some companies, they, they tend to overwork uh, their employees, but some don't. Like for, but for me, like for example, where I am in my department, uh, I'm working eight hours, so I don't feel overworked because I'm getting a day off every week. Wow. And on top of that, if, I, if there are public holidays, I get compensated for those extra public holidays that, that I work. In case I work overtime, I also wow. get compensated for, for overtime. So... You don't feel overworked? I don't feel overworked at all, but there are some companies... Uh, they tend to overwork their employees. Like, they tend to overwork their employees. Some companies underpay them. underpay them, and on top of that, they work long hours. For example, some work 12-hour shifts, some work 14-hour shifts, some 18-hour shifts. Yeah, but really, for me, my experience, I haven't been uh, overworked. Okay. Yeah. There's stories out there talking about mistreatment of black people in the Arab world. We want to hear it from you. The evidence is out there for the girls. We want to hear about their voice. Are you strong enough that you never talk about it or it happens or it does not happen? Let it hear from you. For me, based on my own personal experience, I haven't uh, faced any racial encounter 
most people I have encountered, they, are, they have been very, very uh, supportive and very, very uh, friendly. friendly. Despite the difference in our racial backgrounds, everyone has been very, very friendly, very, very supportive. Uh, like, for example, for me, the people I work with, they are all, like, almost 90, 90%, they are not uh, from my ethnicity. Yeah. But we connect, like, we blend in as if they are, they, they are, they are my uh, fellow, fellow Kabayan, yeah, my fellow Ugandans. <laughs> You have an experience of three years in the UAE, in Dubai, one of the most expensive cities. Yes. Is it expensive? How are you managing? Because I believe you are a youth, so many costs come in. Yeah, definitely. Dubai is very expensive. Like, for example, uh, renting apartments, or if you want to get uh, an apartment, renting it, it can quite be uh, difficult transport it's also difficult like for example if you want to rent an apartment it can cost you maybe around uh, uh, 3,000 uh, dirhams that's around 3 million Ugandan shillings and sometimes the utilities can be higher than that for transport uh, it's very expensive taxis are metered so it's quite difficult also to move around but for me how I've been managing my uh, my survival like uh, I decided to, 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 to use public transport because it's quite uh, Cheap. more, more cheaper yeah. and yeah. also I regulate my movements. I don't more often move around like uh, when I'm going to create content, that's when I move or when I'm going to, to visit someone who's very important, that's mm -hmm. when I move out. So that's how I manage my expenses but all in all, it's very, very, very expensive. You just have to be careful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are so many nationalities working out there in the UAE, but I believe it is not all a bed of roses. Rashid, according to your personal experience, what is so hard about working in a foreign country, about working in an Arab country? Well, for me, uh, well, uh, one of the hardest part about working in a foreign country, and on top of that, an Arab country, is a language barrier. That's number one. Uh, number two is the distance from home. It's very far, you know. That long in the UAE. Tell us, what do you love about the UAE? Well, for me, uh, what I love about the country, number one, uh, is the hospitality. The people there, they are very, very hospitable. Everyone is friendly. Wow. Uh, on top of that, uh, another thing that I love about the country is its winter period. Its winter period is basically one of the best winter periods in the world. It's not hot, it's not too cold, it's just like averagely normal. Yeah, weather. it's just a perfect weather. So, those are the two things that I love about the country. Number one, the people, they're very, very hospitable, most especially the locals, the local Arabs, you know. They are very, very, very friendly, very loving, and very hospitable. I went to South Arabia, you were in the UAE. Someone might be wondering why are Ugandans running away from their country? What is so bad? What do you think is happening in our country that everyone is just living, trying to make ends elsewhere? Uh, number one, the costs of living here in Uganda, they are increasing every day and then. But also, the, like the income people are getting, it's decreasing every now and then. For example, uh, most jobs right now in, in the country, they are paying less. And on top of that, corruption, you know. Uh, I, I feel that, I, I, I didn't want to speak about corruption, but it's the fact, you know, like corruption is rampant. Yeah. If you don't have anyone, you know, like for example, someone big in the country, like you can't succeed in certain things. So those two things, number one, number one, rising costs of living, they are driving people away from the country. Yes. Thank you so much. We want to hear from you. What advice do you have for the youth here in Uganda and the youth out there? Where are you? Are? Okay, so for those here, what I would recommend you to do, uh, Uganda, is a, is, Uganda is a developing country and on top of that, Uganda has uh, tons of limited opportunities, unlimited opportunities rather. So if you're having one opportunity, please hold it tight and on top of that if you discover other opportunities please go for them don't stick on one opportunity for those over there what i would recommend you to do is of course save and invest back home because africa is developing africa is growing spend all your savings in africa that's what i would recommend you to do save for uh, save for africa because we are we are over there just to make money but besides that we wouldn't have been there yes
Wow, thank you so much, Rashid. And thank you so much, our viewers, for watching. Thank you so, so much. Don't forget to check out our channels. My channel is Deadora, and his channel is Rashid Freestyle. Yes, check us also on Instagram. Follow us out there because we are going to give you the best content out there. We love you so much. Take good care and bye-bye.